I listened to a podcast called uh, Stuff You Should Know. Are you familiar with that one? They did an episode that terrified me. It was about um, anesthesia, actually. Uh, so this one on anesthesia, the reason why it terrified me was that they were basically like, we don't really know why it works. We just yeah. know, and the reason why is because we don't know how consciousness works. Yeah. All I know is that this kind of takes away your consciousness for a little while, and eventually you'll come back. And in the meantime, we can cut you up and stuff, you know. But, <laughs> but it was really, I remember walking away from that, like, they don't understand how anesthesia works because they don't know how consciousness works. And, and I'm always fascinated by, like, why aren't we studying this more? Why isn't it more mainstream to talk about consciousness? I mean, when you think about it, that's that's all we got. That's That's what we are, you know. Um, that's what makes up the experience of life. It's pretty crazy that uh, consciousness is simultaneously the thing with which we're most familiar and the thing that is the most mysterious to us. Yeah. So I, I did a video a while back that was, it was sort of a controversial title. I said, is there scientific proof of God? And that wasn't really the point that I was trying to make, but just sort of a sense of, um, you know, is there like a universal consciousness kind of thing, connected particles through entanglement and that kind of thing. Um, and I talked a little bit about Orc OR. Are you familiar with that? So there's, in my opinion, there's two, okay. com two very good competing theories, but they don't, they're not playing nice and sharing their toys yet. Okay, so you have Hammeroff and Penrose's Orc OR, which starts from this point that's like, well, we, we don't even understand how anesthesia works, says an anesthesiologist. Um, and if you look closer at it, you know, they, they, they floated that theory like 15 years ago. And so they said, well, actually, consciousness might be the orchestrated collapse of probabilities into particular realities, i.e. brain and cells are quantum in nature. And what, what they found recently <clears throat> is that the, the microtubules, which are the sort of uh, room temperature quantum-like devices, mm -hmm. anesthesia might be working to suppress microtubule function not block by blocking receptors in the cells. Therefore, consciousness may indeed have its provenance or it might connect to the physical world in a foundational way through, um, through the microtubules. So that starts to make sense of how the brain might be this quantum-like, quantum-like information processing Thing that could explain how it might have some anomalous correlation to random number generators or to knowing who's calling you 10 minutes before, you know, you're thinking about somebody and they give you a call or you know, this type of anomalous sort of psi weird stuff that happens, synchronicities. You might be talking about more of a something that starts to become predictable. Right. You see a way to actually make sense of this through a core. I think it's great work. Okay, so the other, that's theory one. And theory two would be, um, that is called IIT, Integrated Information Theory. Okay. And I'm going to slaughter it. So, <laughs> so theory goes that <clears throat> any sufficiently self-integrated information system produces a consciousness or a first-person perspective that is... Um, in proportion to the degree of uh, inter uh, integration. <laughs> so to give you an example, uh, uh, Dr. Koch in his TED talk said he thinks that panpsychism, which is the idea that it's actually mind that is everywhere versus materialism, which is the idea that it's only matter and nothing more. He says that that is, at this point, a more parsimonious explanation for reality, <clears throat> and that you could have, for example, something like the sun, which is this giant um, ball of matter, but that is informationally sort of integrated or interconnected, uh -huh. or it, it might not be off base to say the sun has a degree of consciousness, right, which they call phi. So a brain is obviously much smaller than the sun, um, but it has a, a huge degree of interconnection. Complexity. Complexity, exactly, and that consciousness might emerge from that complexity. So there is a bit of a problem, perhaps, with this point of view in that it doesn't answer necessarily the hard problem, 
which is the problem of emergence, which is why it does consciousness or does consciousness emerge from matter. Yeah. But if you are more liberal, I think, with your understanding of how matter might be responding more to info, like to an informational substrate or mathematics, for example, then you might actually see how it's not quite such a problem. Hameroff would disagree, and I understand his point of view. Um, Hameroff, on the other hand, says that he says it's sort of like this panpsychist reality too, but that it's not like the air out here is not as conscious as the space inside my head. It's more like proto consciousness or what could become right. self aware, and you need complexity. This is where I think it ties to the. Um, the IIT perspective, meaning complexity to be able to sort of decode or create that actual consciousness out of proto-consciousness. Right.